What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Urban Discipleship Podcast. On this episode, we are going to be talking about soteriology and uh, reform soteriology at that. How does God say? What does irresistible grace mean? Um, we're going to talk about it on the Urban Discipleship Podcast. Stick with us. Urban Discipleship Podcast. Okay, what's up, everybody? It's Pastor Rob. I'm here with Pastor John. Welcome to the Urban Discipleship Podcast, where we always, always, always endeavor to do two things. That is exalt Christ. And enhance relationships. Oh, man, we got one today. We got <laughs> one today. Shout out. I don't know. I need some more, <laughs> I need some more buttons <laughs> because I already know. Uh, man, this is such a big discussion mm -hmm. throughout uh, the Christian community, man. How do we understand salvation? Um, let me say AGMLA, Abundant Grace, is a Reformed believing uh, church. And so uh, we have a Reformed understanding of soteriology. And so we are going to get into that. Now we're going to use a video from uh, this League of Air Ministries. Um, and... We're going to let that play. I'm going to use it as a jumping off point. Uh, we're not going to get into all of the uh, <laughs> the tulips, but uh, mm -hmm. we're going to talk today about uh, is there irresistible grace. And I think uh, Albert Moeller, um, he like yeah. he doesn't like irresistible grace. He says it should be called uh, sexual calling. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are going to get into it. Um, let me bring it up. Where am I at? Does human responsibility <clears throat> eliminate irresistible grace? Who would like that one? <laughs> well, let me just say that let's admit that irresistible grace is not the way we would choose to express this. Effectual calling is a mm -hmm. far more biblical way to, to, to express this because irresistible grace sounds like a cartoon setup in which there's someone saying, I do not want to be regenerated. I do not want to be born again. I do not want to love Christ. And yet they're being overruled to such that it gets their will. What kind of love is, is capable of being constructed out of being overruled uh, with one's will? No, it's effectual calling that reminds us that what God begins in terms of the order of salvation, he always finishes. And, and when that work of genuine faith begins in, in the believer, the work of God, uh, he will bring it to full fruition. You're going to see it when grace becomes the operations of grace becomes evident in the in the individual because they do love Christ and they do desire the things of Christ. They they desire salvation, and and so we just need to get rid of the straw man. There are two horrific, cartoonish straw men we need to be rid of. The first is the righteous sinner who desires to be saved but just can't because he's. I say righteous and desiring salvation because he's 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 not he, he's he's not among the elect, and the other is the the person who desperately does not want to be among the elect, but has been elected anyway. Uh, <laughs> neither of those persons is found within the scriptures. Mm. Shout out to League of Men Ministries, man. RC Sproul, man. R.I.P. R.C. Jeez, Louise. Man, I All cry right. when he died. I'll be forgetting. I'll be forgetting. Oh, okay. So we're talking about uh, ir irresistible grace. He talks about these two uh, these two uh, characters as he caricatures. He talks about the person that uh, mm -hmm. says, "I I don't I I don't uh, I don't want Christ." Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't want Christ, and yet he's overwhelmed anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and then mm -hmm. what was the, the, the second one was, uh, who, <laughs> I guess it kind of in the same, same vein, right? I don't want to be elected and has, uh, has no, uh, desire whatsoever, but is, um, he's part of the elect. Yeah, right. Um, he's, he's taking to heaven, kicking and screaming. <laughs> he doesn't want God or Christ. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. All right, brother. I mean, you the expert on this one, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Let it, let us hear. You know, I always every time we get on this subject, I always tell you I got the Norman Geisler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Norman. Geisler. Shout out to Norman Geisler. I got the my my training for uh, what was the class? 
uh, the systematic theology yeah. from, from Norman Geisler. Shout, shout out. Norman's dope. Norman's dope. Norman's dope. I read some on Norman, but we just disagree on the final points of, of salvation. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and so I think the basis for understanding uh, the effectual calling is first and foremost to understand how scripture teaches mm. uh, in regards to the depravity of man. Um, scripture is so clear that we are fallen. Yes. Um, we are not as bad as we can be, but we're falling through and through. Our intellects are fallen, our emotions are fallen, and our volition is chained, right? So we are born in sin and we're shaped in iniquity. Mm. Like, and I think Romans 8, it talks about the fact that um, the natural man, the unredeemed man, he can't even obey the law of God, even if he tried to, because his will is so chained to, to sin because of his fallen nature. Um, and so when you understand the depravity of man, the fact that man is in such a way that he cannot change his situation, right. then it's going to take some power grace. It's going to take irresistible grace. It's going to take an effectual calling to move this man out of the, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. And I think the basis for that is uh, Romans 8, for those whom he... Uh, for no, he also predestined yes. to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many, I mean, among many brethren. And then it says, and these whom he predestined, he also called. Mm -hmm. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. Mm -hmm. So we are taken from our election and eternity pass to our glorification mm -hmm. uh, at the consummation when Jesus returns. And so you have this golden chain where one necessarily follows yes, the other. He yes. is not electing someone that he is not calling and he is not calling someone that he is not justifying. He is not justifying mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. that he will not one day glorify yes. and this and this that effectual calling he's called this is this call where we are made by the power of god's spirit to mm -hmm. hear clearly for the first time the beauty of the gospel our need for yes. jesus and our own sinfulness so we got a little bit of oh so this this leads <laughs> us to a bunch of questions right, right. um so I, I think what you were talking about in that chain, you were kind of agreeing with Moeller um, that mm -hmm. these these caricatures are not. Are no, they not don't exist. Real. They don't exist. Is they, right. these these people who are like uh, uh like I said, I don't want to be elected. I don't want to be part of the elect. Mm -hmm. I just uh, it's just I uh, have no desire for God or anything uh of the which I guess you know some people might say that's a description of. Mm -hmm. uh, total depravity. However, um, they are elected. Yeah. Um, now don't, those people don't. Those, those people, people don't, don't exist. exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is, uh, is so uh, so. It's interesting to hear that chain of, uh, as you would you did you call it the golden chain? Mm -hmm. um, uh, how how God is calling um, those mm -hmm. who, you know, and uh, so I I, I think uh, it. It's kind of because what happens is so many of us, especially in the Western culture, we come into our understanding mm -hmm. of salvation in what I call the default understanding. Default, right. <laughs> the, the default understanding. It's like, and I, I, I seen Christ as this great thing, and I chose to be partnered up with the with the great the great thing. Yeah. Right? And, and, and this yes. is what's big, Rob, is to understand that. Um, when the Lord regenerates us. Mm -hmm. So that means where he changes our heart and our mind and we are allowed by his grace um, through the gospel yes. to see our condition tr uh, truly and to see it finally. Um, we will believe 
and that belief is volitional. It's not like I don't yes. want to believe, so <laughs> I'm being forced to believe. No, it's like for the first time, the skills from my eyes have been removed and I've been able to see my sinfulness yes. and the beauty of Christ's sacrifice on my behalf. And when you see that with uh, a, a regenerated mind, when you've been made alive, going from spiritual death to spiritual life, Rob, when you see that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a volitional choice you will make. Yes, yes. you will take your human will and mm -hmm. you will place it uh, in the hands. You take your faith and you place and you will place it in. Jesus Christ in his work of redemption yes. at Calvary. Right? So, <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm so with you, um, but I know I know what everybody's thinking what right now. Say, right? I know, <laughs> right? And so, um, uh, you know, the Reformed understanding uh, draws a lot from the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. um, those yeah. that have a default understanding draw a lot from uh, uh the, the scripture in Hebrews mm -hmm. um, where uh, you have someone who has tasted of the, uh, what was it? He's mm -hmm. tasted of the heavenly gift. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, mm -hmm. and so then the, the question becomes like, what does that mean? Um, you see the examples mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Demas and Judas. A lot of people will, uh, will bring those things up. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and even as you listen to scriptures that are calling you to repentance and belief, it is calling you in a manner that uh, assumes your volition mm -hmm. and your will um, in the in the process. And mm -hmm. so, so to me, I just don't see any contradiction between our, our will mm -hmm. and volition and the and the sovereignty of God. That's really what becomes what's, at, what's at stake right? here. Yes. And usually theologians will distinguish between the general call and the effectual call, mm -hmm. the general call. So you have two people in church. You, you hear this dope message about uh, Christ and the gospel and people who are sitting in the same church, maybe even on the same pew, maybe right next to each other, yes. have very different responses. One is to reject, nah, that sounds cool, but I'm good. And one is like broken, like, yo, I need that. Like, well, <laughs> how, how do you, how, how do we account for such two very different yes. um, responses? And I'll tell, and I'll, I'll answer by saying one heard the general call. Every mm -hmm. we're to preach the gospel. We don't know who right. God is working on or who God isn't working on. Uh, so we are told to preach the gospel. Yes. General call. Boom. You hear it. It can be rejected. But there's something about when the good shepherd, when he calls his sheep, mm -hmm. they hear his voice and they respond. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and, and so you have the Lord bringing about his bringing about the fulfillment of his sovereign decree. Right. Before the world ever was, the Lord has determined who he'll set his love upon. And in time, we see the acted out through mm -hmm. the effectual calling, where he yes. is causing the, the hearts of man to bow in submission to Jesus um, by means of their their own volition. So. Yes, yes, yes. And so there's so many things that these... Uh, the implications that uh, even if so, like when somebody's coming into themselves, like, okay, now there's implication. What does it mm -hmm. mean to preach the gospel? Um, mm -hmm. You know, some people go and what they uh, describe as a Calvin, <laughs> uh, a Calvinistic, I won't use Calvin's name, a uh, reform laziness, right? I ain't gotta, I ain't yeah. gotta speak the gospel. Uh, hyper, uh, hyper Calvinism, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because God has elected, he's drawing his elect. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't have to preach the gospel. Right. Um, that sort of thing. Um, and then on the other hand, right, is that you come into that understanding is, uh, you know, it can have you struggle with your assurance. 
It's like, am I, do I have a false mm -hmm. profession of faith? I feel like I believe. I, I came mm -hmm. into this understanding in a default understanding. I, I felt that choice inside of me um, as I come into mm -hmm. this understanding of God's sovereignty and uh, his control over everything. The person that has started the mm -hmm. work is going to finish the work. How do I know that I am part of the work that he is, uh, he is completing? That he started in you, mm -hmm. right? Well, I think it's it's just the understanding that that once the Lord changes our hearts and our minds, and by God's grace, we're able to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this regenerated heart, this regenerated mind, is now going to begin to express itself with new affections. It's yeah. begin to express itself with new desires, new longings. So when you had no desire for for worship you had no desire for scripture you had no desire for obedience to god's word you had no desire for fellowship these things hadn't they weren't you didn't want to sing a hymn you didn't want to go to church <laughs> no no and what happens when the lord changes our hearts and our minds is that um, he places these new affections inside of us so yes. we desire things we used to hate and we hate things we used to love. And so, yeah, like our faith is seen and it's expressed outwardly yes. through fruit, through um, a changed life, through obedience to God's word. Like, so um, don't, don't see, don't see, okay, well, I believe, but is it something that's true or something real? No, if you truly believe it's going to work itself out mm -hmm. in a life that is in love with Jesus yes, sir. and a life that um, is obedient to the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, it says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and be continually following me. So the light, the changed life places his faith and hope and trust in Jesus mm. and it follows Jesus. Yes. Yes. The rest of his life. And, uh, you know, we had a comment, we had a comment of, uh, when we talked about fanatic, you know, um, as, uh, just saying that, um, well, his faith was never, um, was never real faith. He, yeah. he had never really believed, um, you know, some people take, uh, umbrage with that, but that's because they understand that they have the default understanding. Like you make a choice mm -hmm. to come in and you make a choice to come out. I understand it because I've been on both sides and I, I still I still have what uh who who I think I think MacArthur pointed out, but he he was quoting somebody else. Um this this holy tension between mm -hmm. the uh the two ideas. Um I understand it just brings up so many questions, not only questions about our uh, what does it mean to have free will? What does it mean to have human volition? Mm -hmm. But then it questions, like, what does Jesus mean when he says that he will not lose one? Mm -hmm. If he will not lose one and 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 fanatic or or anyone else is a, is a part of that, what does that what does that mean? Is, yeah, is Jesus is Jesus losing those who have been who have been given to him because? Uh, if this person was in the faith and then now is not, mm -hmm. what is that? Mm -hmm. Did Jesus not complete the work that he has started in, in someone like Fanatic? Oh, yeah. yeah, Fanatic is not dead. <laughs> no. no, but Simon Magus is a great illustration, right? Mm. We, we study, we're studying the book of Acts. Simon Magus, um, by all accounts, seems as though he experiences what is an authentic conversion. Um, however, in that narrative, what happens is uh, his motives and intentions are then realized uh, when he's like, "Yo, let me let me buy that power, right? Let me buy that mm -hmm. power." So it seems, and, and even the text will almost seem to allude to the fact that he that there was true and sincere belief, right? Yes. But over time, his actions proved that uh, he never knew the Lord. And he even talked about the parable of the seed, right? 
You yes. got those seeds where the word of God goes in and it seems to cultivate. And, but over time, right. uh, it proves that the person never, ever actually came uh, to faith, never actually trusted. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the cares of the world burden on uh, and the cares of life and everything. It burdens them uh, yes. and they just turn turn their back. Um, so this is just, this is the reality that people might be attracted to the gospel for various reasons. Maybe it's a change yes. in circumstances. Maybe it's a change, um, or maybe even just philosophically, it seems like something they might believe has some truth to it. Mm -hmm. That's not saving faith. Saving faith is placing your faith, hope, and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, right? Yes. That's what saving faith yes. is. And I bank on that. And and it's those who truly done that, that though they may have some up times and down times, the Lord won't lose them out of his hand. Yes. Yes. Man. Okay. So we uh, put another hope, pin in it. I made we, sense. We, I was doing a lot of talking. No, no, you, <laughs> you, you hidden, you're hidden on it. We're going to put a pin in it because uh, I don't know if you know who Alan Parr is. Shout out to Alan Parr. Uh, he like one of the biggest Christian uh, YouTubers. Um, he has a he has a recent video on what is a three point Calvinist or four point Calvinist or five point Calvinist. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, there's some things we can probably react to there, but we're gonna and just let know go. Yeah. I'm a five point. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I might be missing some fingers. <laughs> yeah, my uh, mentor. Be, he's I a four pointer. Some... I was like, what? Who, who's a four pointer? Um, Doctor Felix. Doctor Felix. Oh. I like him even better. I'm <laughs> he, he doesn't believe in limited atonement. Oh, okay. So we will get into that. Leave us your comments down there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to let you go and remind you to do two things. Shout out to Dr. Felix. Um, we're going remi to remind you to do two things. That is love God. And each other. And each other. Peace. Urban Discipleship Podcast.